Welcome and thanks for watching this Cast Highlight tutorial series. This quick training is focusing on the configuration of the application portfolio. So this content targets portfolio managers and administrators' audience. Prior to dive into the training per se, let's provide a quick reminder and an overview of the process. Cast Highlight is an application portfolio analysis solution running in SaaS. The solution is meant to provide a rapid and objective health assessment, which ultimately provides clear insight to make smart decisions. The process is very straightforward and can be summarized as follows. Cast Highlight uses assessment campaigns that invite application owners to answer a short survey and execute a local agent to scan the code. This analysis happens locally, and only the results of the scan are uploaded to the portal. In other words, the code never leaves the company. As soon as the assessment process is done, you can leverage key analytics at both portfolio and application levels directly through our web interface. This tutorial is going to focus on the very first step that consists of configuring the portfolio prior to launch assessment campaigns. After this quick session, you should be totally comfortable with creating users, defining domains, and declaring applications. Then, we'll see how to manage surveys to finally tackle with the assessment campaign configuration. Once the highlight environment has been instantiated, the portfolio manager is invited through email to activate his account, which simply consists in creating a password. Once logged in, this user has to configure the environment. To access these administration features, please click on Manage Portfolio. As a first step, we are going to create domains that will host the applications. A domain is a conceptual grouping of apps that can be whether an organization, a business capability, a project, or whatever it makes sense to ease your portfolio segmentation. Domains enable filtering abilities for the analytics consumption. They also ease the selection of applications while launching an assessment campaign. Here is a domain. We can rename it Business Apps by using the pencil button. Let's create another one called IT Apps at the same level. And then, create a subdomain called EA and APM, for instance. You can create as many levels into your domain hierarchy. Once your domains are configured, the next step is to create the users. Their visibility on portfolio analytics will depend on their domain association. In this specific case, we are going to create two different users. The first one as a contributor, also known as application owner. This user will be involved into the assessment process. Prior to create, let's make sure that he or she will only get visibility on business apps domain. To do so, we position on the right business apps domain and access to the associated frame to hit the invite button. From this wizard screen, we select the type of user, so here, application contributor, we do enter the email address. And finally, we press invite. The user will automatically receive a notification email to activate the account. As soon as it will be done, the account will switch from invited to activated. The second user we're going to create will be our chief enterprise architect. This person won't be a contributor per se, but more a consumer of the portfolio analytics. So we'll attach this user to the root node of our portfolio. We position on the root node, hit invite button, select the type of user, here results viewer, type the email address, and finally press invite. The last step of the portfolio configuration remains the application declaration. At this stage, we have to create the applications directly through this interface from the Applications tab. There are two ways to create applications. The first one consists of declaring them into a flat list at the root node.
and then we can attach them to the right domain. Or, we can position on a given domain and create apps within this context, which will automatically associate the apps to the relevant domain. While creating an app, in addition to its name, you can also define who's going to be the contributor, in other words, who is the app owner in charge to execute the assessment. To associate a user here, one, the user must already be declared into the system, and two, the user must be either a contributor or a portfolio manager. Keep in mind that a viewer profile cannot assess applications. We have just initialized our environment by setting up domains, users, and declaring applications. Users, regardless of their profile, have been invited through email to activate their Cast Highlight accounts. Domains are here to ensure a comprehensive grouping of apps, as well as supporting the filtering and scoping abilities. We can play with both profile and scope to ensure the access right segmentation among users. As an interesting tip, bear in mind that one given application can belong to more than one domain, which can definitely help in providing multidimensional analysis. Our recommendation is to start with a very well-known organizational segmentation as your baseline, and then start creating conceptual grouping like project scope or phase, applications on-prem versus application into the cloud, or even apps which are outsourced. Prior to engage with the management of campaigns, we have to tackle the other important source of analytics, which remains the surveys. As a portfolio manager, we can reach the Manage Surveys section. The screen is divided in half. The left-hand side gives the active surveys, which means the surveys that are already available and that can be embedded into an assessment campaign. On the right-hand side, we've got two tabs. The questions, which list all the existing questions. The catalog, which provides an exhaustive list of surveys regardless of the status, active or not. Let's start with the first use case involving an existing survey. Cast Highlight provides today four out-of-the-box surveys. The only one that has not been activated here remains the cloud-ready survey. If you want to activate the cloud-ready index, as part of your portfolio analytics, you may want to get the complete index. And the complete index relies on both the code scan and the survey. Just by clicking on the plus sign, the survey becomes then active and consequently available for any new assessment campaign. As a second use case, you may want to leverage a cast highlight assessment process to collect additional pieces of information about your applications. That's actually a very common usage in case you have no other tool into the space of enterprise architecture or application portfolio management. To create a custom survey, the process is quite straightforward. Click on the Create Survey button, give a name and a description, and then use the right-hand side frame to create custom questions. Type your question, for instance, functional description of the application, you can type a text here, which will appear as a tooltip, and select the type of answer. In this case, it will be stored into a multi-text attribute. Here is another question. So let's type number of incidents this last 12 months, and configure the result as a whole number. So repeat this process to create as many questions as you deem necessary. Your custom questions now appear into the catalog. You can now pick and choose to associate them into your newly created survey. Just a quick remark here. Because Cast Highlight is a SaaS solution, all of our customers benefit of the brand new features. It's likely that new out-of-the-box surveys will appear over time. They will fit into the Cast Standard surveys where your custom surveys will always be listed into the bottom section called My Company Surveys. Let's summarize the steps so far. Configuring the domains, users, and applications. 
manage the surveys and make sure that the ones we want to use into our campaign are actually set as active. Last, the portfolio manager has to configure the assessment campaigns to feed the portfolio analytics. Let's reach Manage Campaigns menu thanks to the drop-down list. At this point, there is no existing campaign. Let's press on the Create Campaign button. First, we name the campaign. A recommendation here is to prefix with a date, which will ease to sort your campaigns. Indicate a due date. Press Next Step to reach the Configuration tab. Select if you want to integrate the source code scan and or the survey. In case you activate the survey, you also have to select the sections to include among all of your active surveys. Let's pause here to give additional details. If you want to leverage 100% of cast highlight analytics, please switch on both the scan and surveys. Why should you switch off the code scan? For instance, when you plan to assess a population of pure cuts application, meaning that you don't have access to the source code. Another example, you want to take advantage of cast highlight assessment workflow to pull the audience on some topics or subjects where the code scan is not required. It could be questions related to compliance, regulatories, or simply collecting information to allow business capability mapping. Now, why should you switch off the survey? The most popular answer may be, you have already consolidated your baseline and ask your app owner to answer the survey. For a specific population of apps, you want to apply a continuous monitoring at the end of each sprint. In other words, the cuts can become the routine process to follow the trends. The survey answers are not expected to evolve at such space, so we streamline the measurement process to only concentrate on cuts can. Another concrete example, you are using Cast Highlight to feed a third-party tool like an enterprise architecture tool, for instance. In some particular cases, you want to concentrate only on metrics coming from the code scan and avoid any analytics coming from a survey, i.e. a user data entry. Next, let's transition to the application scope, which consists in defining the population of application to be assessed within this campaign two ways to pick and choose. Select the apps one by one, or use the domains and automatically inherit of the associated apps. Last step for the campaign configuration. You can customize a message that will be sent to the app owners. You can switch on or off this feature. A quick suggestion here, especially for the first campaigns, why not customizing the message by adding shared contents like tutorials, training materials, as well as project schedule? To summarize, we went through a straightforward configuration where we named the campaign and set the due date. We defined the configuration by activating both the code scan and surveys. Then we selected the population of apps to be assessed. Last, we customize the message that will be sent to our app owners. The campaign is now ready, but not yet started. Look at the status, it's pending. We can now press on the play button to launch the process. Any single app owner involved into this specific assessment scope is going to receive a notification. App owners will be kindly invited to engage with a to-do list which corresponds to the list of applications to be assessed. Last details to share regarding campaigns. The campaign terminates automatically as soon as all assessments are complete. We can stop, archive, and delete a campaign. One great feature, which is very convenient to support the continuous assessment process, we can use a campaign as a template to instantiate new ones. If we come back to our previous examples, where we get a population of apps that are evolving at fast pace, and if we want a tight monitoring, we can't duplicate your first campaign to inherit the configuration and population. Only the name and the due date will be different. The first part of the training is now ending. Thanks a lot for watching and do not hesitate to contact us for any further information.